Hi guys, it's me again. I'm doing another screencast for you because I am not going to be here today, Wednesday, because I have to go to the dentist, unfortunately. Um, I'm not looking forward to that, but I would much rather be in school. I have to do it. I don't have a choice. So Mrs. Morehouse is going to be here for me, and I have a couple things that we need to go over. So first and foremost, in Google Classroom, whatever stations that you have not yet gotten to as a group, you're going to stay in that little group that I put you in on Friday, and you're going to uh, rotate to the others that you've not yet gotten to. Toward the end, if you have something that you haven't finished, of course, you can go back in and finish anything that you didn't get to. In addition, I'm putting something else on you, which is um, getting, grabbing your vocabulary books uh, and starting Unit 1, A through D, but more on that here in just a little bit. So first, any stations that you didn't get to, uh, after you've done that formal rotation through the others, make sure you go back and uh, get everything done that you need to get done. Some of you, I've noticed that it looks like you're done, but you haven't actually turned it in. So if you don't know how to turn it in, ask around. There's a blue button for most of them uh, that ask you to turn things in. So make sure that you are doing that because that's the way I know you're finished. So right now it looks like there are a lot of you that are not done. So if you are actually finished and you've just forgotten to go into the assignment stream, click into the assignment and hit turn it in. That would be great. So like the syllabus, there's really nothing for you to actually do other than to take that syllabus receipt page home, uh, have parents sign it for extra credit, you sign it obviously, and then um, bring that in. You can turn it in even though you haven't actually done those other things, just so that we know you've watched the screencast and you have the materials that you need, okay? Um, same thing with the others, the remind code in the digital portfolio. Once you've done that, click turn it in so that we know that you're done. So if you have anything that you need to go back in and fix, turn it in, go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, next thing um, would be uh, Wordly Wise is our vocabulary series. Many of you who've been with our school district for a while know that that's something that you get fourth grade through 12th grade at this point. And um, you will be, oh, I'm sorry, I should not have, have said that. It's actually fourth grade through eighth grade right now. Things have changed a little bit. So you, um, you will get a vocabulary book that is at the back of the room, just near the fan. They're in separate piles according to class. Now, I started with the best of intentions with a black permanent marker, putting your name on the front and then your name on the inside. And then I noticed as I was throwing them on the pile that that glossy cover smudged names. And so it's not what I would have loved for your the front of your vocabulary book to look like. Uh, the last years and the year before were a little bit less glossy and I could still get away with writing on them. This year, not so much, at least with the marker that I chose. So if your cover is schmutz, I'm sorry. Um, we'll try to decorate it and make the most out of it, right? A beautiful oops. Um, and we'll just go with it. Your job is to do exercises A through D for unit one, but before we get going with that, I would like for you to um, see this link that I'm gonna put down below in the assignment stream that has um, a link to where you can find this, but I would like to show you, first of all, um, this is the Wordly Wise website. This is where you would go to um, practice your words, or in this case, I'm throwing it at you because I'm not going to be here today. We would do it in a slightly different format if I were here. Okay, so you're actually going to hit students. You're going to navigate until you see the eighth grade book. So it says book eight, and then you're going to hit lesson one. I'm going to pause it pretty quickly. Avid. Say avid you can hear that um, they're going to say the word, they're going to go through the definition, that kind of thing. Those are all good things to listen to because these words have multiple meanings and you have uh, different exercises working with sometimes the second or third meaning. So it's really important that you go through all of those. Now, if you were um, participating in this last year, you know that we like for you to 
illustrate the word. So among those definitions, if you would choose three words to draw a tiny little picture next to what that word means, using the word in a sentence, whatever, we call those Mr. Sticks, and I'll tell you a little bit more about those when I come back. Um, but if you want to choose three words and right next to the definitions, illustrate what you think the word means, um, just a stick figure is fine, or I'll show you some other um, examples when I come back of kind of interesting and creative uh, figures that people have used for, for this exercise. Research shows that when you illustrate a vocabulary word, you are far, far more likely to remember what the definition is uh, than if you were to just look at the text. And when you combine the picture and the text, it's really, really effective. So that's what we're doing in this exercise. Choose three words, not necessarily words you know, but words maybe you need a little bit more practice on, okay? How do I grade it? Do I see three stick figures? Does it apply to the definition? Okay, that's pretty much, that's easy, right? Okay, all right, so this is how you will listen to the definitions. Then you will need to do exercises A through D. Give me just a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a, a book here. Um, exercise A, you know that there are two starters and two enders, and you have to put this, a starter and an ender together that create a correct definition. You might have had um, classes before where you just needed to circle and create a correct definition. Unfortunately, that's not this class. You do need to write out the definition. What do I look at? How do I grade this? Do I see a correct definition? Two points. Do I see capital letter? Do I see ending punctuation? Is everything spelled correctly with any interior and exterior punctuation there? That's how I grade that. So you do have to write those out. In exercise B, improve each of the following sentences by crossing out the bold phrase and replacing it with a word or a form of the word. So that means that it may not necessarily be the base word. It might be the noun form of that base word within the definitions. So you have to be really careful and reread what you think would go in there to make sure that it makes sense. Exercise C is multiple choice. You'll circle the letter or letters of each correct answer, and a question can have more than one correct answer, so oftentimes you're circling more than just one thing. And then finally, exercise D, you'll notice that there are two bold words, like on page 7, it starts out with brusque and abrupt. Those words are going to be used one through three somewhere, and one of them's going to be left blank. So that means you have three sentences, you have two words, one of them's left blank. Unfortunately, it's not like horseshoes and hand grenades. You know, close enough is good enough. There's an appropriate place to put brusque, an appropriate place to put abrupt, and one of them is correctly left blank. So it's up to you to make sure that you feel you've got the right answer where, okay? It's kind of like a shell game. Read through all of them to make sure that it makes sense within what's there. Oftentimes there's kind of a clue of where things go. Do not do E yet. We do that together in a different format. By the way, please do exercises A through D in pencil because when I come back, we're going to go through, this is our first shot, A through D. I'm teaching you how I want things to look. Do it in pencil so that if you misplaced or forgot about some of these directions, you can fix it before we correct. So it's in your best interest to do that. Okay? All right. So you have finish up any stations that you need to. You have exercises A through D for unit one. And by the way, this is due Friday for uh, my red day classes. And if you don't finish, sure, you can take it with you, but make sure to bring it back. If you do finish, then just throw it in your workspace so that you know when I come back um, and I see you again and we're correcting, you know right where it is, okay? So if you happen to finish all of that, then go ahead and grab a Scholastic Scope magazine because I want you to pre-read that. A lot of times we're picking apart articles there, we're reading them, we're answering questions, we're talking about them, and I'm throwing more links and different things at you in Google Classroom so that you can explore uh, more on those. That should be plenty for you to do during this 90-minute class period. I'm really sad that I couldn't be there today because not only did I miss Friday, but now I miss today, and it's to go to the dentist. I'm not thrilled about that. Can you tell? I'd much rather be here with you. 
Okay, if you have a question, Mrs. Morehouse has my number. You can certainly have her text me if it's a burning question. If it's not something that is a burning question that you need answered right away, then um, I will be back on Thursday so that you can certainly come on in and answer any, I will answer any questions that you might have. Have a great day. And remember, I don't really want to be at the dentist. Bye.